Welcome to the next episode of vSphere Breakroom Chats. I'm Shobit Bhutani, Product Marketing Manager here at VMware, responsible for messaging and positioning of vSphere, AIML, and GPUs. Anything around vSphere particularly. So as part of my responsibilities, I work a lot these days on AIML, generative AI, etc. cetera. Uh, in this series, we bring VMware and partner experts to discuss VMware's uh, vSphere and cloud products. These fabulous experts also share their backgrounds, industry trends and general tips for IT uh, technical experts and our customers. I'm very excited today to talk to Paul Turner, Vice President of Products VMware in today's episode. Hi, Paul. <laughs> hey there. Uh, in this role, Paul leads the product directions for VMware Cloud plat Platform and uh, vSphere. Today, we're here to discuss the launch of generative AI with VM VMware. We call it VMware's private AI. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Paul, uh, really excited to talk to you in this episode. Do you mind just elaborating a little bit about your background? You have a really long, like 35, 35 year experience from what I've seen in LinkedIn. But we'd love to kind of hear about a little bit, little bit about that, what you're doing at VMware, and what's your favorite beverage? Mine's coffee. Yeah, <laughs> well, there you go. I'm glad you have glad you have your coffee for today. Yeah. Uh, so, so yes, I I run uh, products, which is basically core platform uh, product management, which means I cover the vSphere side, the VCF side. We're also responsible for running all of our infrastructure up on VMC. So, all of that platform side of the business is actually part of my part of my area. And it's a really enjoyable area, right? If we think about how we've evolved the platform over the years, we've gone and built in VMs and container runtime into the platform. We've, of course, have the leading virtualization platform out there. We've got the platform now able to run on any service. It's the most distributed cloud possible because you can actually have it running up on Google, on Azure, on, on AWS. You can have it in your on-prem data center. And all of that managed in the same and orchestrated in the same way with the same platform, with the same uh, way to provision images and templates onto it. And of course, we've done a lot on securing the platform and improving the availability of the platform. So it's an exciting area. You know, we've 400,000 customers. This is a big space and, and it's the critical infrastructure out there for many of the companies. Um, so as we... Um, so a little more on my background. I've been in uh, in the industry for more than 25 years, of course, always in the infrastructure side, started the database stuff, started building out clustered databases. I'm programmer by, you know, out of college, you know, computer science background uh, from Ireland originally. And uh, yeah, ended up uh, uh, doing, doing development and doing development on massive clustered systems. And uh, that kind of got my real interest and bug in in in, in uh, for me on how critical infrastructure is how important it is to build resilient available secure infrastructure and performant infrastructure if you think what a parallel database is it's only about performance and availability that's all that matters so it kind of brings us to where we are now as we look at new infrastructure we're seeing the changes that are happening in infrastructure more importantly there's new types of, of hardware and processing capability we could take advantage of. And GPUs, we, you know, just give us an enormous vector. It used to be a server, used to be just, you know, compute storage networking. Well, now you've got the ability to build these specialized custom processing units and we can actually deliver incredible performance for customers' applications. And we can actually build differentiated applications, which is really the exciting bit. We can actually help you drive your business forward because you can take advantage of that new hardware. Fantastic. Um, so that was, that was great. Really awesome to kind of hear about your, your background. Um, now, very exciting announcement we made just a couple of days back in Explorer. We were all, everyone was there from VMware there together. It's, it's really, really exciting to talk about that generative AI launch that you know uh, we did in VM at Explorer uh, called VMware Private AI. What is Private AI? Is it a philosophy? Can you please elaborate? And I'm going to share a screen here, share my uh, share my screen here, and show flash a PowerPoint slide that kind of worked for, uh, that we shared a lot. Okay, let's uh, get it to full screen. All right, can you see this, Paul? This I can see it. Well, well, well. Uh, let me jump into kind of your your question. Uh, yeah. First off, I, I certainly hope there's not any uh, technology companies like us uh, building philosophies and. Uh, um, that would be that would be very worrying. We're about technology. We're about delivering value for our customers. So, 
So VMware Private AI, uh, one big part of this is uh, we it's it's an architectural approach to look at how do you implement the most efficient uh, generative AI capability, and particularly LLMs. We see a lot of capabilities for LLMs, whether it's for you know auto software coding, whether it's for uh, support teams who need to do responsive responsive answers to customers. There's a lot of value we can bring to different companies, different ecosystem, a different. You know, whether it's in manufacturing, whether it's in financial services, whether it's in telco, whether it's in any industry, we see the opportunity for this generative AI. Um, and uh, to get there, though, the, the, it's a confusing space. And so what we see is people need to have more understanding, more control, more architectural guidance on how to deploy that well and and that's where we're playing. And you can see the list of partners that we've included here, services that we've included here. Private AI is bringing together that ecosystem of partners. Think of it as bringing together best of breed people to deliver uh, uh, for you and to help you implement your, your generative AI uh, solutions. Now, the private aspect of it is really important too. What we're seeing people do more and more is, is data is your asset. It's it's the data and your own internal data that is actually going to generate the value. That's what you're doing with, with anything that's generative AI. All it's doing is being able to create, auto-create intelligent answers and automatic answers for your customers uh, or your coders or, or people like that. But but it's to generate it and it's based on your data. So the neat thing that you're doing with private AI is we're actually taking standardized models, open source models. Think of the Llama 2 model that was released recently uh, by, um, by Meta or Facebook, as, as some people will know them. But that allows you to actually download something that is effectively all of the English language, right? And you can take that all of the English language and all the interpretation of the English language, and you could write poetry with it. But I don't think your customers want poetry. What they want is they want you to take your trained algorithms, your knowledge base, your, what your support teams have been trained up and answering for a long time. And they want to take that and they want to put in that extra learning on top of the English language. And that extra learning is what's the real critical value. So the private AIs, how do we do that with your private data? How do we help you take and harness public models that are out there? How do we help you tune and do it in a secure way? And, and the private aspect is also important because it needs to be secure. It needs to be trusted. You don't want to be taking your data like we would never take our source code, push it up onto a public cloud service and do uh, generative AI coding uh, up on, on the public web. Uh, and you've got to consider that for your own data, too. So we see a huge need for customers to get the guidance from us to help them to take their own data, build with public models, do it in their data center and be able to iterate on it and bring together the set of partners and technology that really help you help you make it easy. We're, we're there to create value for customers. Fantastic. So basically, we're <laughs> making it easy to do large language models. That's a very, very, very good point here. Now, the really, really exciting mm -hmm. part of this was this fascinating, different, super, you know, amazing, very exciting launch we did jointly with NVIDIA. Do you mind just kind of talking about this big partnership? Yeah, it's actually great. Like I said, with the private AI and that ecosystem set of partners, you don't have to look very far to say who's the lead partner that we really should drive this with, and how do we how do we really impact the industry with if we look for the top partners, the top solutions that we could put together. The most obvious for us is Nvidia, and so this is a specific partnership that we are driving. But it's not just a partnership, we're actually delivering a product. So this is VMware Private AI Foundation with NVIDIA. Private AI Foundation is a full stack implemented product. We're going to ship it in the beginning of 2024, so early 2024. And it's to deliver a full stack offering to our customers. And that means they get our virtualized compute. They get a set of tools and services that VMware has built on top. Uh, that's what makes the private AI foundation. We'll go into that a little later. And then, of course, you've got the NVIDIA technology and the NEMO framework on top. Um, we're really excited about it, but I was I was thrilled to actually see that Jensen, uh, who leads uh, uh, NVIDIA, was also very excited because he was on his... Um, 
his show, his, sorry, not his show, but his quarterly results, pretty important time, right? There with all the finance guys and they're wondering, how did your business go? And he mentioned uh, our partnership and the VMware partnership 15 times during that call. <laughs> Somebody was actually going and counting and seeing which other, which vendors did he mention? So I think Jensen and uh, Ragu from our team, who's our CEO, I think both are very excited about this. I think the customers are excited. We've just finished uh, uh, VMware Explore um, and, and the interest level uh, and attention on this is very high. Uh, we now just need to deliver it and we are on track for doing that and we expect it to, to ship in early 2024. Fantastic. Really, really exciting days. So much fun with that that entire keynote and that energy level in that room. I just can't forget. Uh, <clears throat> now, last question here. There's some really exciting features that we saw uh, when we noticed the stack diagram, et cetera. Do you mind just kind of walking the audience through uh, you know, what the, some of these architectural features are, right? Uh, like the deep learning, vector database, et cetera. Yeah. Or, and, and anything else you want to talk about on the stack diagram? Yeah, by, by all means. So so you got to think kind of what, what customers need to do. So one of the first parts they need to do is they need to be able to kind of go, there's many different models that they could take. They could Llama 2, they could take a Falcon, they can build even NVIDIA as part of Nemo, have some customized models. So the first thing they need to do is, is decide what base model they're going to build from. So one of the things we're going to we're doing in this solution is we're building uh, the ability to actually help you decide what's the optimal model for you to download. That model gets downloaded by VMware, uh, pulled down into a model repository. And as part of that model repository, we're also going and changing the model, basically converting the model so that it's consumable by Nemo. Um, they, built into this is the entire NVIDIA Nemo framework. That allows us to you know, go from things like an AI workbench, so you build out the tool sets and the tool chain that you actually need to optimize the model, because the model gets you 90% there. The other 10% is how you optimize it with your own data. And the Nemo framework gives you all the capability. The AI workbench actually helps you manage which are the containers that you need to actually model and download into the environment. So, so it's built into this uh, one stack, one shipping offer from us. Um, your deep learning VMs are there as well. So every one of the VMs for it to work, you need to actually have tied it in with the GPUs. There's drivers, there's enablement capabilities. And the deep learning VMs basically come pre-configured and ready to go. So you can just pop them up. You get immediacy of being able to start up environments. And then after you've gone through turning, you know, tuning and optimizing, basically P tuning as we as we call it, and then you know, configuring the prompts, uh, which are how do you how do you help people and guide them on the question side of things. Um, you also uh, there's sometimes there's very fast moving data that changes very quickly. And so in most LLMs, customers will also have a vector database. And the vector database, I like to think of it as our the look aside buffer. <laughs> it's, it's the one that looks up kind of newer or changing information or provides reference information back into your documentation. So every solution you need needs a vector database. This is shipping with our own uh, managed version of a, a vector database. We're actually going to use Postgres, which is an open source database, which you'll say is not a vector database, but on top of Postgres, we're actually implementing PG Vector. And PG Vector is an open source vector database kind of layer on top of the Postgres object database. Um, and then we've in, in the product as well, we've built in GPU scaling. So the single VM can actually scale up to 16 GPUs. So we're working with different partners and that you can also do very fast IO path direct to memory of the GPU, direct from storage like vSAN, uh, direct into the memory of the GPU or direct over the network over RDMA uh, direct to the GPU. So all of that is built in. It's built on our cloud foundation. It's built on NVIDIA AI Enterprise, which includes the Nemo frameworks. These are packed together into one product offering. It's a single skewed offering direct from VMware, sold by VMware through all channels. And also we have uh, three of our partners already ready to ship and working with us on building configured systems for these. And that's Dell, HPE, and Lenovo. And every one of them are going to be delivering a VMware private AI foundation with NVIDIA system. 
And so you'll be able to choose if you want to go just buy the full system, get it ready to go. Or if you want to buy software from us and then roll in your system, uh, you'll be able to do either of those. So available, you know, beginning of, of 2024. And um, yeah, hopefully that gives you a quick overview of features and capabilities that we're building. Very, very helpful, Propal. Um, I think this is very, this is the most fun part about this entire thing is we're going to have something that customers can just go deploy. That's, that's to me is the coolest part about this. So with yeah, that, it's 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 to make it easy. Honestly, the the problem with the generative AI, I, people also don't seem to realize that it 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 doesn't take a huge amount of compute power to actually do this. It's very confusing. Um, people don't know where to start. But your Lama two model, for example, can actually fit into uh, the memory depending on the type of Lama two model. In other words, how many billions of parameters you decide to actually take for the Lama two model, which version you take. But the lower end Lama 2 models can fit in 20 gig of memory, uh, higher end and you know, most complex ones, 140 gig of memory. So effectively what you're doing is you're loading this into the GPU memory of two, four or eight GPUs. It, 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 are that, that covers the entire range of options that you have. And then you're tuning on top. So this is very possible to just deploy these fixed configured systems, which is what we're proposing here the foundation systems, and you just drop in foundation systems into your environment. Um, so it's it's perfect thing to, to apply in size effectively. Fantastic. Uh, and with that, we're coming to a close of this episode. Thanks so much for joining me today, Paul. Yeah, it's actually been, it's actually been fun. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm sure we'll do more of these again. Absolutely. Love the conversation. Uh, had so much fun talking with you today, Paul. And with that, we're coming to the end of this episode. If you like this episode, join in for the next one. This is your host, Shobhit Bhutani, signing off. Have a fabulous day, evening, night, and week. Bye-bye till next time. Mm -hmm.